Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Kulecha and I welcome you. In this video, we will continue with our uh, discussion on the Dhammapada verses. Uh, verses till 40 we have already covered in previous videos. You can check the Dhammapada playlist for the entire list of videos. Uh, now we will continue from verse 41. This is the book that I am referring for uh, seeing the Dhammapada verses. This is the book Dhamma, the Dhammapada by Eknath Ishwaran. It's a very very good book and you can purchase it. If you are from India, then there is a separate edition uh, uh, for Indian uh, subcontinent, uh, which is lower priced. You can also check that. This book is available on Amazon and all the places, right? So, we will start. Uh, verse number 40 and 41 are linked. So, I will recite 40 also again. It says, remember, Buddha says, this the body is like a fragile clay pot. Make your mind a fortress to conquer Mara with a weapon of wisdom. Guard your conquest always. Remember that this body will soon lie in the earth without life, without value, useless as a burned log. So Buddha is trying to say that this body is basically a vehicle that we have got in this life for achieving our liberation. This body is decaying. As Buddha says that uh, it is, I am of the nature to grow old and die. Right? This is one of the Buddha's five remembrances. You can check our separate video on the five remembrances that I have made. So, important to thing to understand is that till this body is there, we can do our spiritual work, we can listen to the dharma, practice our meditation, right, and be on the path of the dharma. When this body dies, then we may not have that this vehicle to practice the dharma, right. So, important thing is to right now exercise our free will, do not waste time, make our mind a fortress. So, as Buddha compared to the, you know, the talked about compared passions, uh, compared uh, our mind to a, uh, uh, a well-thatched hut or ill-thatched hut. Similar way, Buddha is asking here is make a mind a fortress and conquer Mara with a weapon of wisdom, right? Just be in wisdom, be more and more in dharma. Learn the dharma, practice the dharma and if you, if you feel inclined, then you can spread the dharma as what I am doing, right? So, basically, so this is just my interpretation of the basic thing is learn, keep, learn the dharma, practice the dharma and if you feel inclined you can practice, spread it, right. So remember that this body will soon lie in the earth without life. So quickly this body will one day uh, decline uh, and become a, like a burned log. So time to do it is now. Buddha is like forcing us to have urgency in our efforts, right. Verse number 42, Buddha says, more than those who hate you, more than all your enemies, an undisciplined mind does greater harm. More than your mother, verse number 43, it's linked, 42, 43. More than your mother, more than your father, more than all your family, a well-disciplined mind does greater good. So, who does harm? Who creates suffering? Is it the external people or situations or is it your own mind? If you think deeply, then it is our own mind that gives us suffering. The way we perceive the situations. For suppose someone said ill thing to me, someone abused me, right? So I will, if my mind is not well trained, well developed, then I will think that this is permanent. What his opinion about me is permanent. He has said this thing. Now ten other people were at this, were there at that time when he to abused me. So what will they think? And I think that this is all impermanent, and that creates suffering. So this is my mind how it processes. Whereas if my mind is well trained, well developed, I will know that this is impermanent. His opinion about me is impermanent. My opinion about him, my opinion about everyone is also impermanent. Everything is impermanent. So then I will not go in sorrow or I will not drown in anger or revenge. So what basically Buddha is saying is that we focus, we try to focus on people who are outside and we uh, have hurtful feelings about them or we try to take revenge. No. Don't have hurtful feelings. Don't have a mind of compassion for them. Right? It is our mind which gives us suffering. An undisciplined mind does greater harm. We have to just exert control over our mind, train our mind through the various practices that Buddha has mentioned. One of those practices is insight meditation. The earliest form of meditation taught by the Buddha. I made a separate video on insight meditation. You can check. So train our mind because the Discipline our mind. We have to just focus on here. And even when, and it is like my experience that when my, when, when here there is anger, I see angry people outside. When here there is peace, I see peaceful people. 
when here there is easiness calmness i see people also becoming easy calm relaxing outside me right so it's all in here okay next we come to verse number 44 right as a garland so here buddha gives the example of a garland so beauty about these dhammapada verses is that buddha has made it so easy for lay people you just need one book or like verses it's not only that dhammapada is contained in this book there are many many books you can also get the bare copy of the dhammapada uh, on the various you know online it is available just these verses what else do you need you know buddha has given clear guidance to lay people like us right through these analogies right so buddha says verse 44 as a garland maker chooses the right flowers choose the well taught path of dharma and go beyond the realms of death and of the gods verse 45 is linked as a garland maker chooses the right flowers those who choose the well taught path of dharma will go beyond the realm of death and of gods so here buddha is saying that like a garland maker who chooses the right flowers he will choose only the good flowers that will make a good garland he will not choose the flowers which are decaying and everything so as so there is the, the buddha says is the choice exists with us what we need to do there are both paths available there is a path of truth righteous conduct of dharma and there is a path of sensory pleasures we have to choose where we want to go those persons who choose the well taught path of dharma right buddha has given clear guideline right buddha's guideline cannot be at more precise than this the four noble truths and the noble eightfold path just we have to follow that path right what buddha has given us right and so so there is no ambiguity there right so just follow that path and if we follow that path we will go beyond the realms of death and of the gods that means not only the realm of death but also of the gods so that's why where buddha is is trying to say that we don't have to stuck in some god or something like born getting born in some heavenly realm or in the company of any particular god no our goal is from point a to point b from where we are right now from where we are right now with our negative qualities our kleshas our defilements to becoming totally pure free from this cycle of birth and death keep our what we need to do is to keep our focus on our goal i read somewhere there on instagram there was some quote by a venerable monk a uh, very good quote that till you put the samsara till you put the samsara behind you na samsara will not samsara sansar the cycle of birth and death it will not leave you right somewhere we need to firm up our resolve so we are not we are not saying that we will you know sacrifice all our uh, you know worldly duties and we will move to a forest no we will be in this world and being in this world we have to live like a monk as a as a person who is practicing dharma in the remember in the earlier uh, verses buddha said a monk is a person who has purified himself not not just a person who wears a yellow robe right so real monk is a person who ha- who is who has purified himself so we all uh, can be monks in our daily life when we walk on the path of the dharma we don't need to go to a forest to practice right okay verse number 46 remembering that this body is like froth beautiful buddha is comparing the our body to a froth right of the nature of a mirage break the flower tipped arrows of mara never again will death touch you so here uh, again buddha highlights the importance of this body this whole body that we think as permanent it is totally impermanent it is continuously decaying and one day it will end the physical vehicle will not be able to sufficiently hold your mind right uh, so it will decay right so buddha says understand this that this is a mirage this is an illusion break the now the mara mara is who mara is a personification of all the negative tendencies the sinful tendencies like the anger and the fear and you know all these the pleasures sensory pleasures which give us pain and suffering so mara throws arrows at us which are flower tipped so we fail to recognize that the pleasures that we get in this world are flower tipped they or have a flower uh, 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 so we think that they are good and we get engrossed in them but they create our suffering so 
break the flower tipped arrows of mara break them right never again will if you do that then never again will death touch you right we will be free of this cycle i will i will say in the meaning of this verse it is more of the suffering never never again will suffering touch you right suffering is liberation from suffering is our one goal no so if we do that then suffering will not touch okay we come to verse number 47 here buddha compares uh, uh, to a flood so it, it says buddha says as a flood sweeps away a slumbering village death sweeps away those who spend their lives gathering flowers verse 48 49 is also linked death verse 48 death sweeps away them while they are still gathering caught in the pursuit of pleasure 49 but the wise live without injuring nature as a bee drinking nectar without harming the flower right so those buddha says those who are spending their life gathering the flowers means who are engrossed in the uh, in the pursuits in the sense pursuits of sense pleasures um, food drinking sex all these things what will happen to them is that there is a like death will come like a flood that comes and sweeps a village that is sleeping right they will be swept in one go right in one shot they will not be able to even know what has happened to them but the wise who are there who will enjoy the sense pleasures like a bee drinking the nectar without harming the flower that means we will be engaged in all the world and all the worldly activities but we will not be attached to them so we'll we will be like a bee which doesn't harm the flower it just sucks the nectar and it doesn't so that is how we will be right so we have to be wise okay then we come to verse number 50 do not give at your attention Be- beautiful and very important very pertinent verse do not give your attention to what others do or fail to do give it to what you do or fail to do so beautiful and very important on our spiritual path lot of people they get stuck in a uh, outside as to what the other person should be thinking or doing or you know we have to only focus on ourselves right what is our practice am i going right am i not going right is there something i need to improve on keep focusing attention on what we need to do and see the, see the thing is understand this we are all on our karmic journeys we all have our karmic structures some people you see even within family someone is very calm and relaxed other one is very restless and angry so every one of us have our latent defilements our tendencies which make us do so we will not get stuck in correcting others also we will not be stuck in getting angry at others imperfections because see they are on their path on their growth path if we get stuck in uh, 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 correcting others or resenting about their imperfections and this happens a lot in sangha in a spiritual community you will find you you go with the expectation that in the spiritual community all people will be very well you know um, uh, evolved and all no it doesn't happen you find find all types of people even in the spiritual communities so instead of focusing our attention on others what their conduct should be which will give which will distract us from our path we have to realize they are on their journey we are on their our journey and we have to do what we have to do our conduct we have to focus on even if the other person abuses us will we abuse in return to that person then what is the difference between that person and our us right he, let him do as per his karma is how as per his sanskars and let us do, act from a way at at what we are so if we are conscious we can respond definitely we can question the other person but we will question with a calm mind not an angry mind right so with consciousness with mindfulness okay then uh, verse number 51 says like a lovely flower full of color but lacking in fragrance are the words of those who do not practice what they preach verse number 52 says like a lovely flower full of color and fragrance are the words of those who practice what they preach again buddha emphasizes in like in previous verses also he has done is he has emphasized in many of the discourses that i study of the buddha and i'll cover in my future videos buddha emphasizes on the fact that you should practice what you preach whatever you say you have to practice in our 
in, in, in your life to the extent it is possible, right? There are definitely, there are such stronger tendencies that are very difficult for us to come out of. Like for example, for me, there is a tendency of, you know, uh, perfection and anger and complaining and these tendencies, I'm working on it. But sometimes it's not very easy, even if being in this knowledge, but yes, what happens is being in this knowledge and sharing this knowledge, there is, you know, whenever that tendency comes, there is this awareness is more stronger that, you know, this is what I need to do, right? So, Buddha gives the example of a flower. So, so full of color but lacking in fragrance. What is the use of that flower? So, what is the use of not, you know, pre preaching or studying the Dharma but not practicing it? So, very important. Point number 53, verse number 53. Many garlands can be made from a heap of flowers. Many good deeds can be done in this life. So you have a heap of flowers. So you can make many garlands out of it, right? From that heap of flowers. Similarly, many good deeds. So friends, in this life, what we have to do is find a way, find a way that we can do good deeds that benefit people. See, if it doesn't benefit anyone, then it is, even that good deed is of no, no use, right? We have to find a way in continuing our jobs and our businesses and everything, Find a way to do something that benefits. So there are two ways to do. Either you spend your actual time in doing those good deeds, like you can visit uh, orphanages and contribute or do social work, right? Help feed dogs or feed cats or feed, uh, feed uh, birds, right? That is also service. Or you can contribute in some way to those people who are working towards some good deeds, right, to any spiritual organizations or something who are actually working in that direction. But we have, we can do many good deeds in this lifetime, right? Okay, verse number 54, the scent of flowers or sandalwood cannot travel against the wind, but the fragrance of good deeds spread everywhere, right? So, and 55 says, neither sandalwood nor the tagara flower, neither lotus nor the jasmine can come near the fragrance of the good. So Buddha is emphasizing on the good deeds that we do in this lifetime, the fragrance will spread everywhere. And one more thing I will here add is that as they say, the Tibetan wisdom goes by, that every single uh, act, good act that I do benefits my previous generations, seven previous generations and seven further generations. So what, see, there is a very good uh, song also you can check uh, by uh, Planting Seeds by Empty Hands Music. They have, in that song, they, they, they just say that what we have to do, friends, we have to only plant the seeds. We cannot control which seed will mature, which seed will, will ripen out, which seed will die. It is that higher power that decides, right? We, we can only plant the seeds. And the seeds that we plant today, we may see that there are no results that are coming of our good deeds. But over time, maybe many future generations down the line, will thank us from what the de good deeds that we have com co we have committed today. So our task is just every day do some like random acts of kindness. Do the acts of kindness not expecting any return. And we can do many such deeds and the fragrance of such deeds will spread not only to us, will not only remain to us, but also spread in our society, in our community, in our future lifetimes. But ensure just that we do this these good deeds from an from an intention of service and not to get a gain. Our intention is everything, right? So we have to just take care of that. Verse number 56. Faith, faint is the, 56, 57. Faint is the scent of sandalwood or the tagara, but the fragrance of the good rises high to reach the gods. Mara can never come near those who are good, earnest and enlightened. So Buddha again says the same thing is that that the fragrance of the good even it like it goes to our future generations and it also rises high to the gods. Mara can never come near those who are good, earnest and enlightened. If we are, see, there is always this possibility this of getting stuck in things, uh, getting stuck in lower kind of pleasures. But if you are good, earnest and enlightened, if we are on the path of the dharma, every day we devote some time 
to the practice of our meditation and for the practice of right conduct we are mindful in our speech in our actions we make the right effort then mara cannot come near us right okay verse 58 59 a true follower of the buddha shines among blind mortals as a fragrant lotus growing in the garbage by the road side brings joy to all those who pass by how beautiful i mean i am just like wondering how buddha you know uh, uh, you know made these analogies to help lay people like us understand right so a fragrant lotus even if there is a garbage so we are all you know this negativity this you uh, know the sense pleasure the consumerism in this world we are stuck in that you no know, it's like a garbage only right and we can be a fragrant lotus growing in the garbage by the road side brings joy to all those who pass by right even if that fragrant lotus brings peace or a smile on someone's face for just a second we are worth it right the, the what the practice we do so we have to come to such in such a level that our conduct and it is so better so we become we become that fragrant lotus so that is the sign of a true follower of a buddha who shines amongst the blind mortals as a fragrant lotus that is 58 59 now let us cover the last verse which is verse 60 for this video and then we will close this uh, long is the night for those who are awake long is the road for those who are weary long is the cycle for birth and death to those who know not the dharma right so long you know it's a long weary you know road so just imagine yourself there is a long road right and your car is you know damaged and you have to walk long right to reach the other point or a hotel or a motel or whatever and you know how how you will feel you will be weary and everything and you will see a wrong road so long is the road for those who do not know the dharma right so so we have to decide whether we want to take that long road or we have to take the shortcut so it's like a dharma following the dharma is difficult but it's actually the shortcut right but uh, if you don't follow the dharma it is the long long route so you have to decide right so this is 41 to 60 that we have covered i hope uh, even that something that you have positive th- that you might have taken from this video uh, if you have then i will be very very happy and uh, Uh, do give me com- do give your comments your views on these verses what you learned and uh, your feedback and uh, uh, i see you in the next video where we cover from 61 onwards 61 to 80 in the next uh, video thank you for watching namo buddhaya namo buddhaya